Okay, brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome back to our word study, Repent slash Repentance. And remember, our main focus is to realize, is repentance or repent ever a physical act, or is it something that happens in the heart? The evidence of repentance is a physical act that comes after repentance. And as we've seen, we're going to finish up the Old Testament with repent slash repentance. And when we get into the New Testament, it's going to be amazing. Because we're going to be focusing hardcore on salvation and repentance as it applies to salvation. Okay? Now, uh, we're in the book of Jonah and Zechariah. The last two books with the word repent slash repentance. Okay? I didn't think it was, but in the last study, or the study before, in one of the books, there was the word repentance. So repentance was used once in the Old Testament. But most of the time it's repent, repented, repenteth. Um, so... Jonah chapter 3, verse 1, if you want to turn there in your King James Bibles. Jonah chapter 3, verse 1. And we're going to go all the way to 10. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, because remember the first time he ran, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. Okay? In other words, it took three days to walk across the city of Nineveh. And, Jago and Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So... He's prophesying because the city's so wicked that God's going to destroy the city in 40 days. So the people of Nineveh believed God, they believed God, and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. So they put on sackcloth, he put on ash on his head, and they're fasting. Verse 8, But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. You know, call upon the name of the Lord to save you. I'm just throwing that in there because they're crying unto God. Uh, don't do this, please. Please, you know, spare us. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil ways and from the violation, violence that is in their hands. Okay? Verse 9. Who can tell if God will turn and repent? Right. Two things again. We always see that. Repent and turn. Turn and repent. Right. Turn is the action. Repent is what happens in the heart. But in this situation, it's talking about God. So let's go. I'm going to start over at 9. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? Remember, one of the definitions of repent that we've seen in the Old Testament is how God deals with people. It's not saying that God is a sinner. It's saying that God's going to change how he deals with people. One of the great verses we went over together, brothers and sisters in Christ, was talking about that if they're doing good, if they go from bad to doing good, God will repent of the evil that he puts upon them, the punishment, and he'll bless them. But if they turn from the good to the bad, he will repent of the blessing them and punish them. So it's all about, it's the best verse to show how God changes his providence, how he's dealing with a person, people, okay, how he's going to do things. Verse 10, and God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil, that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not, okay? God saw their works, evidence of them repenting. They repented in their heart. They believed God. They're wicked people. God's going to destroy the city in 40 days. 
they, they repented, then the evidence of that repenting was their works after they repented. Okay? But this word repent is talking about the Lord changing what he's doing. He's going to destroy the city, and now he's not going to destroy the city. He repented of destroying the city. Doesn't mean that God's a sinner. Okay? Some people always throw that in there saying, who are you saying? God's a sinner because he repented? Uh, it's all about context, brothers and sisters in Christ. Context, context, I'll say it again, context. Let's turn to Jonah chapter 4, verse 1, or some could be on the same page. Jonah chapter 4, verse 1, we're going to go all the way through 4. 4. Chapter 4, verse 1 through 4, if I can say it properly. Okay. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly. Okay, it displeased him exceedingly. Okay, here's where you guys see how Jonah gets selfish. But to please Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God, and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and representest thee of the evil. Repentest, I'm sorry. Repentest thee of the, of the evil. There's our word, repentest. Verse 3, we're going all the way to 4. Verse 3, Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. It's getting pretty dramatic. Then said the Lord, Dost thou well to be angry? And you read about this, um, he went, he preached, the people deserved to die, and the city deserved to be destroyed for the sin that was going on, and he felt God should have destroyed the people. Now, I know some people disagree with me, but part of me also feels that it's a pride thing, too, he's, that, you know, he said it was going to happen, now it's not happening. It's a pride thing. But he did talk about how God's graceful, great, grace, uh, if I can say it, my words this morning, Gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and great kindness and repentance thee of the evil. He knows that God will repent of evil sometimes. I'm not saying he doesn't. But if you look at what he went through when he tried to run, and he's like, went in there, finally went in there, did what he was told, obeyed the Lord, he was getting very uh, selfish. Those, and like he was the judge. Like he, he should have been the judge and said they deserve to die. But that's not the focus where we're looking on. Repentance. This is talking about what the people were hoping for. And God did. It's talking about providence. God dealing with the people. He knew that God would repent when people re repent. Uh, that there's times where God will change what he's going to do. If he's going to do evil, he'll change and do good. Or he'll stop the evil. Or the evil won't, as we've looked in our studies, the evil won't be as bad. He means it to be really hardcore punishment destruction, and he'll stop halfway and repent because the people start repenting. Okay, So once again, in context here, it's talking about God changing how he's going to deal with something. Jonah's saying, I know that you, got, you repent sometimes. You have such grace and mercy. So that's all for the book of Jonah. We will be turning to... Let's see, Zechariah chapter 8, verse 1. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 1. Remember, this is just a context study. This isn't like a big in-depth study. Sometimes we might learn something pretty neat, and we will go in-depth a little bit, but for the most part, it's a context to find out what the context of a word repent or repentance is and get the definition. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 1, we're going to go all the way through to 15. And it's going to be a while until we get to the Word, but we're trying to get everything in context of what's going on here. Again, the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and I was jealous for her with great fury. You know, we read through the whole Old Testament how they're having to repent because they go after strange gods. And God said, I am a jealous God. You'll have no gods before me. Verse 3, Thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem 
And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, There shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem, and every man with his staff in his hand for every age. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. Pretty nice. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, should it also be marvelous in mine eyes? Saith the Lord of hosts, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. And I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their gods in truth and in righteousness. Now, like I said, this isn't an in-depth study, but part of me sees that, and it just reminds me on how the prophecy about Jerusalem becoming a nation again, and the people were, were went back to Jerusalem. Okay, He brought them from the um, east country and the west country, and he saved them in the sense that they weren't wiped out. But I'm not saying that's exactly what this is talking about, but that's just what I remember and think about when I read that passage. Verse 9, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Let your hands be strong, yea, that hear in these days these words by the mouth of the prophets, which were in the day that the foundation of the house of the Lord of hosts was laid, that the temple might be built. And, brother and sister in Christ, they're rebuilding the temple right now in Jerusalem. It's already been approved and everything. Um, I don't know if they've hit the groundwork yet, but it's being rebuilt. Verse 10, For before these days there was no hire for man, nor any hire for beast, neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of the affliction. For I set all men, every one, against his neighbor. Remember when Jesus, and I always like applying this, when Jesus said he didn't come to bring peace but a sword? Okay. Uh, set uh, man at variance, uh, father against son, or son against father, or, I, I gotta look that up, father against son, uh, mother against daughter, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and a man's foe shall be they of his own household. Okay, set neighbor against neighbor. But now I will not be unto the residue of this people as in the former days, saith the Lord of hosts. In other words, he's changing. Things are changing. For the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their due, and I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathens, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, as I, as I thought to punish you, when your fathers provoked me to wrath, saith the Lord of hosts, and I repented not. There's our word repented. Uh, fathers, we've gone through the Old Testament together, and seeing how the Jewish people, Israel, throughout the Old Testament, they'd serve God, then the next generation they'd fall away from God. They'd serve God, they'd fall away from God. Okay, Their fathers provoked them to wrath by bringing in false gods. Uh, sexual perversions, um, disobeying God. Okay. God said, don't do this, and they did it. Verse 15, we're going all the way to 15. So again have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah, fear ye not. Okay. In the Old Testament there were times where God repented not. Okay. There was times where he was almost like he was going to destroy Israel. But he repented. He changed. He didn't destroy them utterly. He didn't scatter them to the four winds. Uh, and some of the stories of the Old Testament when it looked like he might have. So right here as we see, I repented not. As God talking, he didn't change his providence, how he was dealing with the fathers that provoked him to wrath in the Old Testament. Okay, before this was written. So as we can see with this word study, praise the Lord, we are done with the Old Testament. In the sense that the New Testament, I'm just really excited about doing the New Testament more than anything. But I wanted to do a thorough word study so it's not just me saying, you know, repentance is never a work. Just take my word for it. This is stuff that we all should be doing, brothers and sisters in Christ. And I encourage you to do word studies, uh, subject studies. 
Um, that you look at, like, one of the words I like to do uh, here in the future is anger. And go through the Bible on every situation where anger comes into play. Someone lost their temper. Whether God was, was provoked to anger, like we read, or man was provoked to anger, you know. Just looking up and going through the whole word of anger to help teach us that we should be slow to anger and do our best not to be angry. Especially with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're not to be angry with neighbors, our neighbor. And we're to preach the gospel with love and patience and peace, not with anger. So, thank you for watching and sticking with uh, the ministry this far in the word study of repent slash repentance. And I will see you in the New Testament. It's... Like I said, I'm just really excited about getting there, and I hope you are too. And I want to say peace, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with each and every one of you brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is getting tough. I'll be coming out with another video shortly showing some things. Um, me watching another video, uh, stopping here, and they're showing some things that are going on overseas that someone showed me, and it's very... Shocking. I don't really keep up with what's going on in the world. I have brothers out there that do that and they have websites where they do show what's going on in the world as far as prophecy and I don't really keep up with that much, but this video was pretty neat. I really want to get into it. So I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. Keep praying for me and my wife and we pray for the brethren out there all the time. And these are, we are in the last days. We are definitely in the last days. I will see you in the next word study of repent slash repentance.